Welcome to the Fam Jam Team Call. It is August 12th. You guys, I'm so excited tonight. We're going to talk about... We're going to talk about a lot of things, um, but for the most part, we're really going to talk about some really tangible tips that we can apply into our business to get ourselves to the next level, and we're also going to talk a little bit about mindset um, and a little bit about our ego as well in this business, because that has a really big part in the things that we do um, and don't do in this business, So, and I think it's a little bit unexpected. We're going to dive into that, but before we do, I, of course, we are going to kick this call off with recognition. You guys, I mentioned last week on the call, I, I love the fact that we were having like 20, 25 minutes of recognition. However, it's cutting into the call and like the meat and potatoes of the actual call. So I have actually put together a leaderboard every single week that I want to share with you guys. I want you to continue though, to shout out any like rank advancements on here. Please recognize that. Please recognize recognize anybody who is new to the team. So if you're a new coach on this team, I want you to feel like you are welcomed. Um, and I want you to welcome your new coaches to the team as well. Um, but some of the other like success club stuff, I'm actually just going to post a board right now. So I'm going to share my screen so that we can see this incredible month already. You guys, I'm like, I'm pumped for this. Okay. So here is week two. You guys, August, two weeks, like I can't even get over this. Success Club 5, we already have like three, six, nine people in Success Club 5 or more. This is insane to me. Um, life changers, so people who are already on the board with either Success Club 2 or more, it means you're helping one or more lives. Look at this list. This, this is like absolutely mind-blowing that we're at August 12th. We have had months where this has been like our entire list, you guys. So huge congrats to all of you who have already helped change a life or two or more. This month, you guys are doing things and making it happen. Um, I, huge shout out. So we haven't done this before, but I wanted to do a massive congrats to our team builders so far for this month. So these are our top three coaches. Each one of them, Shaw, Cassie, and Alex, have actually added three new coaches into their organization this month so far. That is a really big deal. Um, sometimes there's months where we don't even get to add three new coaches in an entire month, and they've done that in 12 days. So I just wanted to give like a huge shout out to the three of them for being incredible team builders and moving their business forward. I know that they have big goals of moving into um, two star diamond, diamond, and diamond for Cassie and Alex. So huge shout out to you guys. And also just wanted to highlight here that we have 57 lives changed so far this month. That is collectively as a team, you guys be proud of that. That is work that we have done all together so far on Fam Jam. And I literally couldn't be more proud of you guys for achieving such greatness in like such a short amount of time already. So Huge shout out to all of you guys. Um, I will pop this over. If anybody has any rank advancements or any new coaches they want to welcome to the team, please just unmute yourself and you can go ahead and do that now. So I just, I'm going to go really quick. Sorry. Sorry, Tara. <laughs> I should know. You, should, you always go first. Um, I just wanted to give a huge welcome to uh, Lara. She's in there. Um, but she's been showing up every day in our Stronger Together community. And I'm just so happy to welcome her here and just see where she takes this business with Fam Jam too. So welcome, Laura. Welcome, Laura. If you can drop in the chat, tell us where you're from so we can connect with you and your IG handle. That'd be amazing. Anybody else? I'll go quickly. Um, he's not on the call, but I wanted to give a huge welcome to, he goes by AC, but his name's actually Adam. Um, and he's one of my husband's very best friends. And he sent his very first share cart and it was a VIP member. Um, and he did it within four days and he actually has his second VIP member lined up. So he should be Emerald's like by the end of the week. So that's massive. So I just wanted to recognize him. Hopefully he'll watch this later, but I just wanted to show him out. That's incredible. Welcome and massive congrats. From BC, I love it. Who else? Anybody have any other welcomes or rank advancements? Rachel. Um, I want to welcome my husband. He's right here. His camera should probably clearly. <laughs> uh, he just signed up as a coach to work the business and I'm super excited for him. We are two power couple in the house. I love it. Welcome. Anyone else? 
I want to give a huge shout out to Becca. Becca actually went Emerald today. Um, super cute. She actually just sent me a message. She was like, I think I just hit Emerald. Wasn't quite sure, um, but she did it. And yeah, she's totally nailed it. Like literally, she's only been a coach for a couple of weeks. So massive shout out to Becca. Uh, super proud of the work that you're doing and how you're showing up. Um, anyone else before I pop this over? All right, we're good. Let's kick this off, you guys. Um, I am, honestly, I have been diving into a lot of what's been working, what hasn't been working in my business in the last like month or so, I want to say. Um, and I've been listening to a ton of training calls. I've been listening to a lot of the top coaches. I've been attending a lot of calls that have actually been for diamond coaches and above to calls that have been for two-star diamond coaches and above. And I've just been like, pouring myself into so much training from coaches that is new and relevant and not things that are from like three, two, three, four years ago, because you guys know that social media can change really, really quickly. Um, like literally the day I was doing Instagram training, they like added reels. It's like, it changes so fast these days. And with all the changes that are happening, I want like the most relevant information, the most relevant things. And so I was listening to a couple of calls and I kind of pulled together some of the things that were, were identifying like success on other teams. And I feel like we have such momentum on this team. I am seeing so much growth happening on this team. Week in and week out, we are seeing new rank advancements. We are seeing more people on our leaderboard. Like you guys, I legit am honest what I was saying like a couple of months ago, that leaderboard would have been the end of the month leaderboard, not two weeks in leaderboard. And so the growth is definitely happening. And I want to capitalize on the momentum that we're all seeing in our business so far. And I want you to start having that confidence in the things that you're doing and the fact that they're actually working. Because sometimes it's hard to see that what we're doing and how we're showing up today are actually the things that are going to work and are going to sustain a business for us in two, three, four months, a year from now, right? So as I've been doing all of this, the thing that has resonated the most with me is that some of the most successful teams that I've been kind of like analyzing have really shifted their focus and their mindset from hitting success club five to helping as many people as possible. And that's a personal decision for you to shift your focus but this kind of comes into play when we talk a lot about goal setting. And I mean, if you're setting the goal for success club five, you might hit it or you might come in at SC two or SC four. If you're setting the bar for like SC 20, you might come in at like SC 10 or SC 12. And it's all a matter of mindset. But if you're focused on five, you're only going to aim for five. You're not going to aim for more. If you get more, you're like, eh, well, if I get more, great. If I don't, whatever, I hit my goal. It's good. And so I've really noticed this shift in like, yes, success club five is a very basic metric in your business to know that you are doing everything month in and month out to build a really solid foundation for your business. However, if you want more than that, if you want success to come faster than that, if you want growth to happen quicker than that, it's a matter of switching the mindset out of success club five, or even maybe you're not hitting success club five and you're like, why am I not hitting this thing? It really is mindset and it really does come down to, okay, let's shift it. Who cares about success club five? Let's just focus on helping as many people as possible. Or maybe you're like, I need to pay for groceries this week. What does that mean? That means I need, I need to help three people. So I have 150 bucks in my bank account so I can pay for groceries. It's a matter of flipping it so that it's actually tangible for you to know why you're showing up that day and doing the work that you're doing to hit the goals that we're telling you to hit. Because I can tell you all day long to hit success club five, but if you don't find meaning in that, you're, it's not likely that you're going to hit it. Same with any of the coaches on this. If they're telling you to achieve a goal or this is the next step or this is, this is the next step in your business, this is what you should be going for. If you're already Emerald Coach, we just had the Emerald Call, we were talking about how to get to Diamond. And it was like, if that's not a goal for you, then anything we said on that call probably isn't going to make a lot of sense or you're not going to apply any of it because you haven't internalized it in a way that actually is going to impact your life and how you want this to impact your life. Because we all want this business to do something different for all of us, which is the beautiful thing. 
But switching that mindset, I think, is a really big thing um, and a, a really simple shift that you can make if you aren't achieving your goals every single month and you want to be achieving your goals more than what you have been. Um, I think that even in that, you're going to be really proud of the person that shows up today and you're going to be inspired by even yourself and showing up today in the way that you can with the information that you have. And I think sometimes we get stuck in our own heads with, I can't achieve these goals. I can't do these things because I'm not where I want to be yet. But I promise you, as you show up today, as you are just doing the thing that you need to do in order to get to tomorrow and you share that with the world, you're going to be so dang proud of the person who comes out on the other side with these incredible results, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial, like whatever it is on the other side, you're going to be so dang proud of that person that showed up so imperfectly on this journey. But sometimes we just wait so long to be perfect before we show up. And that is one thing that is also really going to hold you back. Um, so I really just want to like empower you guys to just kind of switch your mindset on that and know like, let it be messy, show up messy. It's totally okay. And to flip, to flip it like success of five, if you want to hit it, start aiming higher, start aiming higher than that. The other thing that I've really noticed, and this is something for me even is like someone used this analogy and I actually loved it. They were like, stay close to the fire. And what they meant by it was if you want to see success, start staying close to the people who are achieving success on this team. It doesn't necessarily have to be your PS coach. It doesn't necessarily have to be the people who are in your direct downline. It just is a matter of staying close to the people who are achieving the things that you want to achieve in this business. And when you stay closer to the people who are doing the thing that you want to do, I promise you, you're going to start achieving success in the same way that they are because it will rub off on you. That success, you're going to start to see how they show up. You're going to start to see the consistency that they have in their posts and their social media in their stories. You're going to start to hear and pay attention to the way that they're training their coaches in the chats. We have a gazillion and one chat pods that you get to be a part of depending on where you're at in your business and you can get really great training from coaches who are achieving the success that you want to have in your business. So stay close to the fire. I honestly love that. And for me, I've been doing that for the past couple of weeks because I've been staying close with a lot of the calls that we've been having with some of the diamond coaches and above, because I want to know like, what is it that you're doing on your team? Like, what can I take for my own business? But also as a leader, what can I take to give to you guys so that you can implement it into your business and start seeing the success that you want to see every single month, month in and month out. Because this business has literally changed everything for Jared and I, and I want to see that for more of you as well, but know that this is literally the beginning. Like I still feel like a baby coach. Two years in, I still feel like a baby coach, and I still feel like I have so much to learn and so much that I can teach as well. So I'm totally here for it, but stay close to the fire. That means like attending team calls, getting into the chats, like being active in those. It means follow, make sure you're commenting on other people's posts that are inspiring you. Like tell them that it's inspiring you. Recognize people. That is so, so key. And show up in your challenge group, like big, big, big one. Um, but something that I wanted to, I just wanted to touch on like five points really um, that are going to help you to help more people. Because if the goal is to help as many people as possible, then it really is, okay, how are we showing up in our business every single day in order to make that happen? And we talked on the Emerald Call tonight about the tracker, the Success Club Business Activity Tracker. You guys, it's part of the training, and it is literally your metrics of what you need to be doing every single day. If you are not a diamond coach, that should be the only thing you do in your business every single day. Like literally nothing else matters except for that business activity tracker every single day. And it's a matter of doing it two, three, four times a day, depending on what your goals are and depending on how much time you have. But that literally is the thing that you need to do in order to help more people. Now, if you aren't tracking in a business activity tracker and you aren't checking everything off every single day, 
I was actually sharing that I am using the SC Bat, the app on my phone, and I'm going to flip back over to tracking on paper because for me, the, the one on my phone, I'm just checking it off and it's just check marks to get it done. And it's not actually being intentional with each activity on the tracker. And I need to start showing up with more intention behind each of those activities instead of just checking it off to check it off because then you're not building a business. Then you're just completing a checklist. And the tracker is not meant for you just to complete a checklist. The tracker is there to help you identify your areas that you can grow and to help you gain confidence in the areas that you're really good at. Because for sure, there's things on that business activity tracker that you are solid in. Like you are so good at doing them. It might only be two or three things. Could be five or six things. I don't know what they are for you, but we all have things that we're really, really good at. And then we all have things that we really suck at. And those are the things that we avoid and we don't do them. And the things that we avoid and we don't do are literally the thing that we have to do in order to take our business to the next level. Because if you keep doing what you're doing today, you're not going to move your business to the next level if you haven't been hitting your goals. If you haven't been receiving the success that you want to achieve, one, patience is everything. So sometimes we just have to be patient with it. But the other side of it is like, where are my gaps and where can I actually grow? And if you aren't tracking on it, then I say this with love, but you are a hobby coach. You are treating your business like a hobby. We are treating this business like a part-time business and you are going to get results like a part-time coach if you aren't tracking. Because without tracking, your PS coach can't help you. I don't have time to go through the entire business activity tracker and analyze what I think you may or may not be doing just by seeing what you've posted in your stories or on your feed for the past week. That's really hard for a coach, any coach to mentor you and be like, well, I think maybe this is your gap, or I think maybe this could be it, or we're literally just like pulling at straws or like, okay, well, based on what other people have done, here's what I'm going to tell you to, to try and do. But if you can track your business and you can show up and be 1000% honest about it, your mentor can help you so much more. Because your mentor can then go, okay, great. Here's three areas where you're not showing up in your business. Here's three things that we're going to do training on. And we're going to do one-on-one -on -one calls for each one of these areas for the next three weeks. Imagine how fast your business will grow when you start being super, super honest about what you're tracking and what you're doing. And I probably can guarantee that you think you're doing the tracker 100% and you're not. Because I don't. You guys, I've been doing this for two years and I still don't get that tracker done 100% of the time. Honestly, like I can really suck at showing up in my challenge group at times. I really can suck at showing up in that space and like talking to my challengers and connecting with them to be like, how is everything going? Where are you at with your goals? Having that conversation. Do you want to be a coach? Like that conversation can take two, three months for it to actually happen have it in like the first week of them signing up when they're excited and they're ready to go. And it's like, yes, let's do this. I'm on board. Let's go. That for me can be a downfall. And I, I've identified that. Um, my nutrition sucks on my stories. I talk about that all the time. That's a gap for me. That's an area that I can grow in my stories. Really talking about the challenge group in my stories. I've tried to be like really cognizant of the fact talking about the challenge group for the past couple of days on my stories because I identified that like I wasn't even talking about my challenge group. I was talking about the workouts and I was talking about MBF and I said, yeah, we have this other group that's really great that you get to be a community, you get to be a part of, but I didn't share anything else about the community. And so I had to do like this quick little audit to be like, okay, how am I actually showing up? So be like super honest with yourself of how you're actually showing up in your business because I promise you, you think you're doing all the things, but you're really not doing all the things. And if you were doing all the things, you would already be at Success Club 5 this month with all the love said in the world. I am not even at Success Club 5 this month. So I know for me, I have gaps and areas that I can grow. I can 10x some of the things that I'm doing so that I get better results. I can invite more. I can follow up with with more love. I can follow up faster. There's certain things that I just, I know that I can start doing. Um, and I think that in, in the end, it can be mentally draining to do some of the work that we do, but it's not hard. 
Like nothing that we do is really hard. It's easy work, but it can be mentally draining. So like recognize the fact that yes, being on in front of a screen for like four hours a day or like four hours at one time can definitely be draining on you. And it can definitely drain your energy. And just be cognizant of like that mental drain that happens because you'll start to put it into your business. So if you start to identify that and like pump up the energy before you get into conversations, pump up the energy before you get on a call with somebody, before you get into your stories, when you bring energy into the business, you start to light a fire in your business. And I can see that all the time in mine. When my energy is really low, my posts suck, my engagement's off, people aren't replying to my stories, I only show up with like five stories that day. Like, and there's days where it's just, it's gonna happen, it's inevitable, we don't always have like fantastic days and we're not always vibing up here. But the more you can vibe at a really high level, the more energy you're gonna get back from people and the more fun you're gonna have in this business. Literally is gonna be way more fun. So the tracker is huge. Make sure you're doing tracker every single day and make sure that you are identifying your gaps in that tracker to talk to your coach about what you need to do to get to that next level. That's one thing that will for sure help you help more people. The second thing is just talking to more people. In this, you need to grow your following. I have never run out of people to invite, ever. In two years, I have never run out of people to invite. And the reason for that is because I add people to my Instagram and to my Facebook every single day. It was uncomfortable in the beginning and I didn't really know what I was doing, but I had to add people every single day. So the very first thing on the tracker under section number two is initiate connections and add followers. We were talking about this on the Emerald call and we were like, I feel like it, it should be two different lines. Because I feel like initiating connections and adding followers are two separate activities. And sometimes we lump them into one where we think we add all these followers and we're like, great, we initiated connections and added followers, check, done, move along. And it's not, they're two completely different things. So when I say that I'm adding followers into my network, I'm literally going to like friends of friends lists and I'm just going follow, 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 follow in hopes that they follow me back. Like this is just a game of numbers. I am following so many people all the time. Then on Facebook, I'm ad friend, ad friend, ad friend, ad friend. I'm going through friends lists. I'm going through families lists. I'm going through mom groups. I'm going through my suggested list. I'm going through all of these things all the time. And I get messages who are like, do I know you? And I'm like, nope, you came up as a suggested friend on Facebook. And they're like, oh, cool, how's it going? And like, you just start a conversation. But I think before I would be like, oh my gosh, they don't know me. What are they going to say if I just like randomly add this person? <laughs> are they going to think I'm a creep? Like, what are they doing? Now, for guys, it's a little bit harder because sometimes they do just look like creeps because I block every single guy that tries to add me as a friend. Sorry, Jer. Um, I try and I'm like, no, delete, 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 delete. But for the girls, it's so much easier. Guys follow guys. Girls, like find all the girls, find all the moms and literally just add them all. So where do I go to add people? I'm going into hashtags. Um, I am using hashtags that are non-fitness related. So hashtags of like your city, your location, the country you live in, the province you're in, the state you're in. Um, hashtags for like cool brands that are near you. Hashtags for um, whether it's like boutique stuff around you. I'm doing hashtags for things that I'm into, music, uh, sports teams. Think of like things you used to love as a kid. Like, Literally, hashtags are endless. So you can go into hashtags and just follow the people who are following the hashtags. The other thing I do is locations. Anyone who's tagging a location that is something that I'm into, I love places that I take my kids. So think like, I used to take my kids to like, we have a lot of like local farms around here that we would take kids. So I would search all the local farms, museums in my area, um, splash pads, parks, like literally all this, anything where you think a mom would like check in and like add that location. If you're traveling somewhere, even your home city or where you're from, or maybe where you know family, where you want to live, a place that you've been, you've been to in the past, search all these locations and just add people. It is a rabbit hole, literally a rabbit hole on Instagram on searching these locations to find people. And on Facebook, I just go through friends lists and I go to mom groups. I just add myself to a million mom groups and I just start adding friends in the mom groups. That is all I do. 
because the mom groups don't like when you post stuff inside of them to like sell your own things. So I add them all as friends so they can see me on my personal page. The whole point of being in the mom group is so that they can come follow me on my actual page. Um, but that is literally how I follow people. And that's how you're going to get more eyes on your stuff. Now, the second piece to that is initiating connections. You've added all these people, which is great. And you could be adding like a hundred people a day. You could be following a hundred people a day. Maybe you get like 20 followbacks from that. That's probably a really high ratio to be honest with you. Um, but as you're getting people who follow you back, that's when you start messaging them. And that's when you're like, Hey, thanks for the follow. It's so great to connect. Where are you from? Hey, oh my gosh, love your friggin' family. You guys are the most adorable thing I've ever seen in my life. Hey, this is like, how do you talk? Just talk to them like a normal human being without the intention of inviting. And I think that is the most important about initiating connections is that you are, there's no intent to invite when you're initiating connections. Just connect at a human level with people. And if they're not answering you back in your DMs, totally cool, but you've still initiated the connection. The other way that I initiate connections is by liking and commenting on people's posts. So I am literally going in and like blowing up their feed, like blowing it up. I know that some people follow like the 531 method where you like five photos, you comment on three, and then you send them a message or you follow them. I used to do that method. Now I'm just like, whatever. I'm just going to blow your page up to the point where you're like, whoa, who is Shelly McLeod and why did she just come to my Instagram page and completely like, like and comment on a gazillion of one things? Like, who is this person? I want them to come to my feed. And that is the whole purpose of it. I just want them to come over to my feed because if I feel like they're my people, then of course I want to connect with them. If I get to, a, uh, if I, by the way, like if I get to an account and I'm like, I can't even find a comment, like I can't even make a nice comment or find like anything in common, like move to the next person. Don't force anything. But honestly, there's so many cool people who are showing up on Instagram. Like I have found so many cool people and so many of you are sitting right here right now on this call. Like it's, it's crazy that we've all connected online and some of us are family and friends, but like literally we've all just kind of connected this way. And that for me is something that I just, I've stayed true to in the past two years and I've never run out of people. Um, the other thing that I think holds people back from talking to more people is getting past rejection, you know, and not wanting to be said no to, or having someone be like, do I know you? And then instantly you're like, oh, retreat. How do I take back the, the friend request? I don't even want to send it anymore. Like run away as fast as I can. But for me, I just don't pay attention to it. We're human and messages are going to bother us. Yes. But I really don't pay attention to it. I don't have time to worry about the person who's not ready to join a kick-ass community when I know there's other women out there who need me. And if you can flip the script on your mindset to, around that, honestly, rejection is just going to be like, bye, next. You're not ready. Totally cool. If you're going to keep watching me for the next year, I'm going to be here when you're ready because I'm not going anywhere. I am here. I'm in this for the long run. So when you're ready, I will be here. But until then, cool. I'm going to go help someone who is ready. And I think for me, it's just always been the mentality of like, I'm so busy with conversations that I don't have time to dwell on the person that said no. I used to when I first started as a coach, when someone said no, I was like, <laughs> it was like the end of the world. I'm like, no, you were my only lead. <laughs> like, don't say no. And that, that is just a, a part of growing. That's just a part of building your audience and adding more followers and initiating those connections. And if you're running out of people to follow, or sorry, if you're running out of people to invite, it's because you're not doing the initiate connections and add followers. You're likely only doing one of those two things. You could be initiating connections with people who are already at the table, which is great, but you're not adding anybody new into the mix. Or you're adding new people, but you're not actually connecting with them. And I find that that is usually the disconnect. You're doing one or the other. And I definitely had seasons in this business where that's all I'm doing. I'm doing one or the other and not both. And when you start doing both, bingo. That's where the magic happens. So don't overthink it. I think the other thing that um, around initiating connections and adding followers that people kind of get hung up on is like, when do I invite them? Like at what point 
do I finally go, okay, well, I've initiated this connection. I've added the follower. I said, thanks for following me. I talked a little bit about her family and now I'm like, great. Now what do I do? Like, how do, how do I actually invite this person? Um, I did a training in the team page a couple of weeks ago and I talked a lot about that and like my message, um, there was a script and I just, I loved it. It was like, Hey, I was going through my inbox, getting a bunch of girls set up for next virtual boot camp, And I thought I would invite you to join us. And like that to me was like such an easy segue. Like it literally didn't matter where I was at in the conversation. I could just be like, Hey, I was just going through my inbox and I totally thought of you like that for me. I was like, bingo, like super easy to transition any conversation, regardless of where you're at or just go for the invite. Be like, Hey, okay. I know you haven't, I know we haven't talked a lot, but this might be completely random, but this is the thing I've got going on. Do you want to join? Like just invite. And I think for me, the next thing after that is once I invite, I don't stop talking to them because that's when I feel salesy. Like that's when I feel, oh, I only had a conversation with them just to invite them because I want a success club point. Like that's when I feel like, ugh, that was kind of gross. Shalene, don't do that again. And I've definitely had those months where I've like only invited because I'm trying to reach a really big goal. And then I was like, oh, I didn't even follow up with any of those people. I didn't even go back to like have a, a decent conversation with absolutely anybody. So I think regardless of the response you get back from somebody after an invite, like just continue to talk to them. If they're not your jam or they're like, I'm totally not into whatever it is that you're doing right now, they'll unfollow you. They'll stop liking your stuff. They'll stop watching your stories. And at that point, that's when I stop talking to them for the most part. If you're still going to watch my stuff, if you're still going to like my posts, if you're still going to comment on stuff, you're still going to get an invite from me. And I'm still going to talk to you. Like that's just kind of my, been my mentality around things. But I just, you have to make sure that you're talking to more people than just who's there. And that means adding, adding more followers and initiating more connect, connections. Um, so I hope that that makes sense. The third thing that I noticed was um, like an overall theme for a lot of teams was really talking about showing up with more consistency. And I think this comes down to doing the tracker every single day and having that consistency and doing the tracker every single day, but it's getting even more granular with your consistency. And I kind of touched on it. I'm like, talk about your challenge group every single day. Don't just show your workout video. Talk about your challenge group every single day. Show them what they're getting. Yes, we say share your journey all the time, and it's so important to make sure you're sharing your journey, but also share what they're going to get. What are they receiving? Because everyone wants to know what's in it for them. And I think when I go through a lot of what we're sharing collectively as a team and like what I see on stories, I don't feel like we talk about that as much collectively. And I'm just kind of like painting a wide stroke brush here. But when I am watching stories and I'm seeing how we're showing up, I don't feel like we're talking about our challenge groups every single day. I don't see us talking about the coaching opportunity every single day. You guys, you're not going to get coaches on your team if you're not talking about coaching opportunity. It's a really important part to be talking about coaching and what it means to you and what your goals are and setting that vision and, you know, connecting on calls like this. We should be tagging. I, and like, I say this with all the love, but I don't think I, I think I get one or two tags maybe from every team call after we're done. Nobody is talking about team calls when we're done with them. All of Shorty's PS coaches should be screenshotting this, taking a picture of this and tagging Shorty after this call being like, oh my gosh, this was incredible. Like, I love our team. It's so great. We get training every single week. Like those are some of the things that you can show up and start to show community. You're showing that you're getting training. You're showing that you're getting support. You're showing that you're learning and you're willing to learn alongside other people and that you're getting uncomfortable and that this is, this is what we do together. I love that someone just tagged me in a story right now. This is fantastic. And I don't say this just because that was Marisol, by the way. I'm sure there might be another one coming through. But Marisol literally was just like, action. She implemented the thing I said to do right away. I don't say this to get tags on Instagram. I'm not saying for myself, but I'm saying for every, like whoever you connect with. Remember when I said, stay close to the fire? Who are the people you want to be close to? Who are the people that have success in this business? Tag those people. Tag those people and be like, I see you. I saw you on the call today. 
Like, loved seeing your face on the call today. These people are incredible. This stuff is really what shows community and it's what people want to be a part of. And that for me, I know to be true because when I saw my coach tagging so many other people in her stories and I saw my coach showing up at events, taking selfies with 10 other women, I was like, I want to be there. Like, I want to be in that picture. I want to be at Summit. I want to be at the events because I want to be a part of that. And that doesn't happen unless you show it. And sometimes I think that we don't show it. And I know I say don't tag everyone all the time on Instagram because then you only get connected with the people you're tagging. But I think it's important to be tagging some people some of the time. Not every single story you need to tag people in. When you're trying to show community, tag people. If you have a workout video, tag someone in it. I actually like props to the Stronger Together squad with uh, Danielle's team. Like you guys tag each other in all your morning workout videos all the time. And it's incredible. Like I totally see community on your team with your challenge group. Would love to see that with the coaching side of things too. But I totally see that with your challenge group. I'm like, yes, they have a really supportive community and they're there for each other. Um, so yeah, just show up consistently in that way, but like make sure that you're talking about coaching and what it's bringing to the table for you and that you're talking about community and that you're showing it. Same with, for me, like my gap. Nutrition, I say it all the time because it is, because I suck at nutrition, but that's a huge gap for me. And most of my clients suck at nutrition because I suck at nutrition. <laughs> like that's just the name of the game because I don't show them enough. And so I'm starting to be like, okay, this is my gap. This is how people are following me and what they're starting to repeat. So this is where I need to level up. And I started nutrition chats this month with my clients to help them. I'm starting to talk about it a little bit more. And I'm starting to be a little more consistent in those areas. So identify where you need to show up more consistently. Um, and I think that it's really important to also identify how you're showing up in your stories with some of the... Um, some of the like stock photos or like the fancy, the fancy graphics that we're doing in our stories. A theme that I saw on some of the most successful coaches, some of the coaches who are hitting like success club 50 to hundred, don't use any type of like Canva image or stock story ever. They're using their own voice to explain exactly what you get. And they're like, it saves me a ton of time because I'm not creating any of these images. And sometimes when we're sharing the images, which I fall into the trap of, oh my gosh, this is easy. Just give me the image so I can go and I can share it because I need stories today because I suck at my stories today. And I just got to throw these up there because I could not, I just can't show up today. I fall into it too. Like, and I'm sharing things that I know that I'm doing because obviously we're doing these as a team because we're all doing them, right? But I think that using your own voice in your stories to explain the challenge group, to explain the challenge pack, to explain MP MBF is so much more powerful than sharing videos that we're sharing in the chats. Don't get me wrong. Some of the videos are great and they're flashy, sure. But are you getting a return on your investment on those stories? Do you actually have people replying to those stories? Do you actually have people who are answering the poll at the end of the series of five stock photos saying, hey, yeah, I'm ready, let's do this. Or do you get response from people when you're like, should I wear my hair curly or straight today? Look at my workout. Do you guys work out at home or the gym? Do you, like, what is it that you're asking people and what is the response that you're getting back? Because if you're sharing the stock photos and you're sharing the stock images or we're like, hey, look at me, this is Shakeology and no one cares, then don't do it anymore. If people care and they're answering to it and they're replying to it, amazing, stick with it. But if you aren't hitting your goals and you're not getting to where you want to go and those are the things that you're doing, we got to switch it up. And it's using your own voice. I know it's weird to hear yourself talk in your stories. I know it's weird to hear when it like plays back and like the instant you record it and then the volume comes up, do you not instantly like turn the volume down? You're like, no, 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 no one can hear that. Like, I don't want anyone to hear what I just did. It's like this weird natural thing that like none of us like to hear our own voice. We just don't. But I promise you other people do. And if you can be more consistent with showing up with your own voice and sharing in your own way in the things that we're doing with coaching, the coaching opportunity, with your client groups, 
that is really where you're going to find the impact. And that's where you're going to find a switch happening for your audience actually responding back to you. So consistency is definitely it, but also it's like showing up as you, which is kind of like accepting where you're at and accepting who you are and not trying to be her, not trying to be like anybody else on this team, but just taking everything else that we're doing and making it your own. That is really important. When you, when you start to show up authentically as you are, you start to, it starts to feel really good. One, like the business, just like all of a sudden you're like, Oh, I love it. Like I'm here for this. And your audience really, really responds really well to it because they see you, they see the shift. I promise you they're watching. They will see the shift. They will see it happen. And you can make it happen at any point in time. You don't need anyone's permission to decide to start showing up differently on your stories. You can decide right now, you can go delete all the stories that you have right now and start showing up differently. It is totally a decision that is up to you to just show up as you are, because I promise you, you have a story and everyone needs to hear it, but you just have to show up every single day and feel like you're being annoying. If you don't feel like you're being annoying talking about a challenge group or a coaching opportunity, you're not talking about it enough. I promise you. <laughs> because people don't see every story every day, right? Reality of everything is like people are not catching everything you're doing. There'll be a small handful of people that like capture everything you're doing because they're stalking you and they're going to be on your team one day. But the majority of people don't see everything. So if you don't feel like you're being annoying, then you need to show up more on that subject. And there's like times where I'm like, oh my gosh, let's stop talking about MBF. Like just stop. And I'm like, no, keep talking about it. Keep going. Like that's when you have to keep going. Until somebody tells me to stop talking about it, I'm not going to stop talking about it. And nobody has been like, hey, Shalene, you're talking about this too much. Like literally no one has ever sent me a message to be like, hey, you're talking about your fitness too much. Everyone always says, oh my gosh, you're so inspiring. And you'll get those messages too, right? That's consistency in showing up. Um, if you're having trouble with like consistency in showing up in your stories in terms of like somebody gave me this really great advice and they said like theme every day. So like maybe Mondays is never miss a Monday at your workouts. Maybe Tuesdays is nutrition. Maybe Wednesdays is work with me Wednesdays. Maybe Thursdays is just like a fun fact about me. Maybe Fridays is like ask me anything Friday. Like start to create a theme for your day because it's going to help you to show up that day instead of trying to think of, oh my gosh, what do I post today? Oh my gosh, what do I do today? I don't even know what to say right now. But if you give yourself a theme and you can switch it up any, any day of the week, but on Sunday, like plan out your week and just give yourself a theme for that day that can guide your post. It can guide your invites. It can guide your conversations. It can guide the hashtags that you're searching. It can guide your stories literally with like one word for that day can give you everything that you need to do on the business activity tracker. It can help you to connect with your clients. You can recognize people based on that theme. There's so much that you can do if you just give yourself like one word or theme of the day. I think it can really help to just like spark that creativity and imagination around how you show up and being consistent. Um, the last thing on that, on like showing up consistent, consistently, and I kind of touched on it is really just talking about like how the other person is going to benefit from it. I think sometimes we we're really good at sharing our own story, um, but we're not great at like connecting the dots for other people. So just start connecting those dots on like, why is it going to be so good and so perfect for that other person? Um, okay. Number four, the fourth thing that I, everyone was kind of talking about as I was listening to like all these different trainings was follow-ups. It was like follow-up, follow-up, follow-up. And if you don't follow up, you're missing out. So maybe you're a boss at inviting, but your follow-ups suck. And that could be the missing gap for you. Um, but when I follow up with people, like I'm, I'm literally like super annoying. I'm like, Shaleen, go away. Annoying. And like, until they tell me to go away, I'm not going away. So if you tell me you're interested in something, I like, okay, cool. That's great. Let's go. Like you're ready. I'm ready. Let's go. Let's do this. And if you don't answer me, I'm messaging you tomorrow. And if you don't answer me, I'm messaging you the next day. And if you don't answer me, I'm messaging you the next day. And if you're still watching my stories and I've messaged you four times and you still haven't answered me, I'm sending you emoji eyeballs to be like, why aren't you answering me? I see you seeing my stuff. Where are you? What is happening? Like, why did you fall off the face of the earth? What is going on? It's okay to like be in people's faces because we want to help them. I have good intentions and I know that what we have works. I am confident in the fact 
that I can help you get to your goals, which is why I'm confident in my follow-ups. So find the confidence that what you're doing is actually going to help the person because that's what's going to help you in your follow-ups. I think we don't follow up sometimes because we're not confident in what we have is actually going to change someone's life. You can't force someone to press play. You can't force someone to meal prep. You can't force someone to send the invites. I can't force you guys to show up on team calls, but I know if you do, it'll change your life. That is the confidence that you have to show up with. It's not a matter of making people do things. It's just a matter of showing them the way. And that's where the follow-up is like so key in having confidence in the things that you're doing are actually going to get people the results that they're looking for. So be confident in that follow-up. It is literally everything and be annoying AF in your, in your follow-ups because this is the only way that people are going to be like, fine, what do you want from me? I'm here. Yes, I see you. I'm busy. I'm sorry. And you're like, I know you're really busy. Let's go. We can all do this. Um, the last thing is be there when they're ready. And this, this goes with everything else that I talked about. And if you are there when they're ready, they're going to come to you. But if they don't know that you're still doing this thing, this cool thing that they're interested in because you haven't been consistent, because you haven't followed up with them, because you didn't invite them, because you weren't doing the business activity tracker, they're not going to come to you. I have literally had, and I count them because they drive me insane, five people that I have gone back to to be like, hey, I think you would make a really great coach on my team who've been like, oh my gosh, I just signed up last week with so-and-so. And I'm like, oh, no, like it is heart wrenching. I was there, but I didn't do all the other things. And they didn't know that I was still there because I wasn't being consistent because I didn't follow up with them because I wasn't showing up in my business to make them know that I still was mentoring people in this coaching opportunity thing that I'm doing that they thought I was crazy for three months ago. And now they're doing it. Like I literally, I have five people that I know I have completely lost. And I mean, I am like, Oh my gosh, I'm so proud of you for taking the step in your business and like doing the thing because I know this will change your life, but I'm so disappointed. It's not on our team. Like in the same breath, I'm just like, ah, Shalene, come on. And those people are still out there. But if I don't show up and I'm not consistent, they're not going to come to me. So I have to do all these things so that I am there when they decide to say yes. And that means that I am showing up on the days where I don't want to show up. It means that when life gets hard and I'm going through personal shit, I'm still showing up. It means that on the days where I've been down and out and I literally, maybe I'm fighting with the kids or Jerry and I are having an argument or I got a really bad message from somebody that day or something happened in my family. Like I'm still showing up. It's a business. If you treat it like a business, it will pay out like a business. But if we're treating it like a hobby or we're treating it like a part-time job or we're treating it like an ex I don't know, anything that you're just like, meh, it doesn't matter. If it shows up, to, if it's here tomorrow, great. If it's not, whatever. Like if that's the attitude that we have in our business, then no one's going to come to us when they are ready. They're not going to be like, I want to go join their team. They're going to go find the other person who's been showing up and been consistent and been like, oh my gosh, I had no idea you were still doing that. Like I totally would have joined your team. And you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like that is heart wrenching. Like that is like a kick in the gut. But if you give up now, you literally are giving up on your potential and you are holding other people back from theirs. You are the gateway for other people to start living their potential. Like, I don't know if that actually sinks in, but let it sink in for a minute. You literally have all the tools and resources to offer other people that can save a life. It saved yours. It saved our marriage. You literally have all these tools. And I know it might sound like you might be like, oh my gosh, maybe that's a little bit dramatic, saving lives, but it's not. It literally, I have heard story after story after story after story of the amount of lives that this business has changed. And you 
are robbing somebody else of their potential to change their life if you are not showing up consistently in your business. And I believe in every single one of you, like to my core, that you can do this and you can achieve really, really great things and really beautiful things in this business. And it can bring your family so much more than you ever thought was possible. But you have to believe in yourself. Those are the things that I want to share with you guys tonight. Those are the things that I've been gathering from other team trainings and other teams that have been really successful in the past little while. And I just feel like you guys are having so much success already that I want to keep this momentum going. I want to be able to level up the training for us, but I also want us to be 1000% real and honest with each other about where we're actually at in our business. So you may see a bit of a shift for me in showing up a little bit more like, okay, this is what we got to do to make it happen. Even though I'm sitting in the dark and you can barely see me right now. Um, but you might see a bit of a shift for me and it honestly is coming from a place of love, but I need to be honest with you guys about the potential that this has for you, but also kind of calling you on where you're at and how you're showing up in your business in order to help you get to your goals. Cause if not, I'm robbing you of your potential. If I'm just like, yes, you're doing it. You're doing really great. Rah, rah, rah. Let's go. I'm not being the mentor that you need me to be to help you level up in your business. So we're going to kick off the last like half of this year with some pretty incredible calls, but just like, honestly, we're just going to level up. Like I'm ready to level up. I don't know if you guys are. I am like totally here for it. And I know there's so many of you guys. I just like, we've never been in this position where we've had so many of you guys actually going for such big goals. So that to me is like, okay, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's do this. Cause we've just never been in this position. And to see so many of you like striving for diamonds, striving for emerald, to see so many new faces on this call. If you are new on this call tonight, we just like brought it tonight for you. <laughs> um, but if you know, like we just, we haven't seen this growth and that goes to the work that you guys are doing. So don't take any of what I said tonight in a way of like, I'm undermining the work that you were doing because you were doing really great things. These are just the things that I've identified where like, I feel like as a team, we could be doing so much better in these areas. Um, and these are the gaps that we kind of have collectively together. So does anybody have questions for me though? I have not been looking at the chat. I will look at it right now. Oh my gosh, I should have been looking at the chat. Look at like all you guys are like blowing us up. Does anybody have any questions? You guys are quiet. Yeah, I have you guys all thinking. Okay. I'm going to let you guys go. I love it. I will post the recording of this call um, as soon as it is up. And if you guys have, <laughs> yes, those are our kids screaming in the background. I apologize. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can comment on the recording when I post it. Tag your coaches when we post it. I hope you guys have a great evening and congrats on all the successful far. Bye guys.